Here's a question for everybody out there. Brave New World. Utopia or dystopia? This may seem like not a real question, seeing as it's usually considered to be a dystopian criticism, but Huxley didn't mean it that way when he first wrote it. Uh, when he first wrote it, he, he pretty much thought that that's what we needed to do. Uh, you know, the last two chapters are an unfinished argument about everything that they've lost, what they've given up, that they've given up science, they've given up religion, they've given up art. And it's, a, it's an unfinished debate as to whether or not um, it was actually worth it that they gave up those things. And um, Huxley was entertaining the idea that, that that was necessary. Of course, then the Second World War happens, uh, totalitarianism proves itself to be not the coolest thing in the world, and it's pretty impossible for Huxley to maintain this position. So he actually, he actually takes a, a backflip on the issue and says, oh, I was being ironic and, oh, I predicted it, I, I knew it was going to be so bad, but really he was advocating for it. And if you read a book called The Hidden Huxley, I think you'll find a pretty convincing argument for that there. So I won't restate that argument, but let's just um, have a look at the foreword that uh, Huxley wrote in 1946. Uh, this is how it starts. Chronic remorse, as all the moralists are agreed, is a most undesirable sentiment. If you have behaved badly, repent. Make what amends you can and address yourself to the task of behaving better next time. On no account, brood over your wrongdoing. Rolling in the muck is not the best way of getting clean. So um, those sound to me like the words of someone who uh, uh, has got chronic remorse. Uh, but he's decided that, that he's seen the errors of his ways and he's, he's going to turn around. And Huxley did actually turn around from there and, and make uh, some progressions, let's say, towards sanity. Um, but not before the academics of his time could uh, rip the crap through him because they knew exactly what he was doing. So... Uh, Let's see what he has to say to the academics. I have been told by an eminent academic critic that I am a sad symptom of the failure of an intellectual class in a time of crisis. The implication being, I suppose, that the professor and his colleagues are hilarious symptoms of success. The benefactors of humanity deserve due honour and commemoration. Let us build a pantheon for professors. It should be located among the ruins of one of the gutted cities of Europe or Japan. Over the entrance to the ossuary, I would inscribe in letters six or seven feet high the simple words, sacred to the memory of the world's educators. So, um... <laughs> so Huxley doesn't, doesn't seem to like the academics so much. I wonder why. But anyway, he, he moved to the other side of the fence and he's now looking at this kind of scientific totalitarian society, what the uh, Frankfurt School might call the totally administered society, um, which we're pretty much living in. Um, so he's discussing that if he were to write a book again, he would offer a third option for the savage because the savage at the end of the book is is given two options to uh, continue living in the dystopia as a conscious being who was not who who was not indoctrinated to be content with with this disgusting way of living which is kind of like an insane life in utopia or he's got the other option of going back to a, a you know grotesque life in the savage reservation. Now, if I were to rewrite the book, I would offer the savage a third alternative. Between the utopian and the primitive horns of this dilemma would lie the possibility of sanity. 
a possibility already actualized to some extent in a community of exiles and refugees from the brave new world living, in with the, living within the borders of the reservation. So through the, the, through the idea of this third option of, of sanity, Huxley is uh, giving us an idea of, of what he think a utopia would look like. Seeing as that's what he already did with a whole book, and uh, that kind of fell through, he's going to have another shot. In this community, economics would be decentralist and Henry Georgian, politics crow potkin -esque and cooperative. Science and technology would be used as though, like the Sabbath, they had been made for man. Not, as at present, and still more so in the brave new world, as though man were to be adapted and enslaved to them. Religion would be the conscious and intelligent pursuit of man's final end. The unity of knowledge of the imminent Tao or Logos, the transcendent Godhead of Brahman. And the prevailing philosophy of life would be a kind of higher utilitarianism in which the greatest happiness principle would be secondary to the final end principle. The first question to be asked and answered in every contingency of life being, how will this thought or action contribute to or interfere with the achievement by me and the greatest possible number of other individuals of man's final end? So uh, that's, that's Huxley's real idea for a utopia. Um, <laughs> that doesn't sound very utopic to me. Some kind of a religious cult. <laughs> But I mean, you know, he had another try. Good on him. Now, I think uh, predictions and stern warnings are, are probably his strong point, so let's see what else he's got to say about that. The most important Manhattan projects of the future will be vast government-sponsored inquiries into what the politicians and the participating scientists will call the problem of happiness. In other words, the problem of making people love their servitude. Good prediction. Okay, he's finally got one thing exactly right. So, um, Break New World. I think the world described in here is, is dystopic. Dystopian. Huxley didn't originally. Now he does. He thinks a religious cult would be more, <laughs> would be more utopian, but that's, that's a different story. But, um, if you think that it's a dystopia, what would you do if you woke up one day and you were living in it? Um, if you were living in Brave New World and you were a conscious being, what would you do?